Welcome to Threads of Enlightenment. We have our guest as usual, and I want to welcome her to the Threads of Enlightenment family. And I'm going to let her introduce herself first. But as uh, we do here, we are going to go back and get all of the insight that has brought our guest today to where she is. And so I want to, you guys to welcome Sherry, and she's going to introduce herself, and then we'll go from there. Welcome, Sherry. How are you? Hi, how are you? It's such a pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for having me. So hi, everybody that's pleasure. listening. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Sherry Diamond, and I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm a wellness coach, and I teach a course called Balance for Life, and it's balanced with the number four and life. And one of the things that I've realized over the last few years, especially the last two, is that everybody is, we're all running around and doing our thing and living our life, but we don't have any balance. And there's always mm -hmm. a part of our life where people are saying, I wish I could, I want to do this, <laughs> and people aren't doing it. And I said, okay, I need to find out why. But more importantly, what brought me to this point is four years ago when I was 64 years old, I'm about to have a birthday next week, which I'm well, very happy, happy about. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I went to the doctor for my annual checkup and she told me that I was pre-diabetic and oh. I was terrified because I'm one of those people that ever since I was a kid, all you have to do is tell me I'm getting a shot of some kind of a needle and I don't want to see any of it. I don't want to look at it. Just do it and let me leave. And don't tell me about it, right? So I was said, there's no way I can't do this. I can't take insulin or any of this other nonsense. And she said, well, you better figure out something because you're knocking on the door. And wow. at that point in my life, I had already been my entire life. I was a chubby kid. I yo-yo dieted. I was thin for a while. I gained weight. You know, the typical... The typical scenario that we've all gone through, especially as adults. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, this is a sign that I'm supposed to make a change. And if I don't do it now, going forward, I'm just going to wreak havoc on my health because as you get older, just more things happen to your health just by osmosis. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I went home and I start researching food and I start reading about inflammation and it went on and on and on. And I said, okay, this makes sense to me. This is like science. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to listen. So I started on this journey and in 18 months, I lost 103 pounds. And wow. to date, Congrats. I'm proud to say I have not gained one pound back because I finally wow. figured out the secret. And there is a real secret to keeping mm -hmm. your weight off and being able to live and go out you just have to do it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And then people said to me, you make losing weight so easy. And I kept hearing the word easy. Mm. Wow, this looks so easy. Wow, this sounds easy. What did you do? And I would tell people and they <laughs> go, oh, that sounds kind of easy. And I kept hearing that word knocking on my brain. And mm -hmm. I thought, wait, everybody wants it to be easy. Okay, yeah. maybe I can write this program so other people can follow it and it will be easy. And then I'm going to teach mm -hmm. other people how to do it. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And now wow. I teach other well, people how to make it easy. And I have to say, I'm really proud that I've gotten not only myself to not have to take any medication at, at my age. Um, the only mm -hmm. thing I do take, I have I've had a bad thyroid forever. So I take a pill for that. But I don't have high mm -hmm. blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I don't take any kind of acid reflux medicine, but most of my clients who have, their all their numbers and scores, and their of their health have gone in the right direction, going down instead of going wow. up. So I'm really proud of that. That is awesome. Well, congratulations on all of the above. Well, thank you. You thank know, you. and I know that um, that your journey was not easy. So um, I want you to go back now. Uh, was this the main incident once you were with your physicians at, at that appointment? Was that the main incident that turned you around uh, to begin it? And uh, let me ask you another question. Did you have any type of 
breadcrumbs, as I mentioned, usually that uh, looking back in your life that you saw that were giving you warnings before you got to that appointment with that doctor. Absolutely. The breadcrumbs have been there since day one. <laughs> and I'll tell you about that. But to answer your first question, that was the actual, as Oprah used to say, aha moment. That was mm -hmm. the moment that I knew that I didn't have a choice. I either had to mm -hmm. make a change or yeah. the next part of my life was going to be unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah. And that just wasn't an option. Yeah. So let's go back to the breadcrumbs because mm -hmm. I grew up in a family where food is everything. I yeah. was raised in Cleveland, Ohio, in a, in a very um, working class, um, hardworking Jewish family. And mm -hmm. if you know anything about Jewish people, when it comes <laughs> to food, we're at the yeah. front of the line, right? <laughs> food is everything. So yeah. when we, you know, I say it all the time, when we were kids, somebody would call up my mom and say, hey, we're having a party on Saturday night. The first thing my mom would say is, what are we eating? What should I bring? Mm -hmm. Should I make mm -hmm. anything? Nobody even yeah. cared what time you were supposed to be there as long as you came with food. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like right. a good party. <laughs> right, so the breadcrumbs there were, when I was mm -hmm. a kid, especially like in grade school, I was a chubby kid and I got bullied for being chubby. Mm -hmm. And inside, it killed me. But on the mm -hmm. outside, I walked around like a, I had a coat of armor and you couldn't hurt me. But inside, oh, I was hurting. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so what I realized as I was getting older is that um, it's funny because you call them breadcrumbs and I call them the stories that we start out with that become mm -hmm. noise. Yes. Because the stories become noise. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of how you manage the noise. Do you keep listening yes. or do you mm -hmm. change the noise? Change. Well, the I noise. didn't change mm -hmm. the noise until maybe 15 years ago as far wow. as how I dealt with my life and stopped listening to other people because they weren't always correct. Mm -hmm. But going mm -hmm. back to the food, when I was a kid, let's say we were all at a party and we, everybody was eating ice cream and cookies and it was delicious and everybody was having the best time, that was okay. Or if we went out mm -hmm. to dinner with other families, you could eat whatever you want. But come home from school and go to put your hand under the cookie dish, my mom would say, yeah, I don't think you should be eating that. You're getting a little too fat. So I heard the wow. word fat my whole life. Yeah. So by the time I was maybe 30 years old, I wasn't sure, are you supposed to eat the food? Are you supposed to not eat the food? Do you tell people you're eating it? And basically what I started doing, Ken, is I started hiding food and eating mm. in my car. Wow. So that wow. I didn't have to show other people that I was people, eating. Yeah. And people used to say, I don't understand. I hardly ever see you eating. And they're trying to figure out why was I so fat? Because I was mm -hmm. closet eating when nobody was around because I was embarrassed. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So here yeah. you are. Um, and as I'm listening to you, I hear a couple of things that you would have to deal with in order to progress and, and grow. One is the fact that um, you said you were outside you showed confidence inside you were hurt. Now, and the other aspect of the, the body shaming of the fat and all that stuff, the names that you were called. So how did you, uh, um, how did you manage those feelings and those uh, labels that people were calling and using to identify you as an individual? How did you feel that way when you say hurt describe what that means and and then walk us through how you began to manage and live in that space so what i would say is when i was young my go-to was whenever i felt that way and and that hurt feeling it was i don't know that i could understand at eight or nine years old that it was shame but it mm -hmm. felt like I, it, when, you know, kids go, oh, this is yucky. It was yucky. Yeah, yeah, it just felt yeah. yucky. But I didn't understand mm -hmm. what the word was. So yeah. my go-to when I was young is come home and complain to my mom. Mom, mm -hmm. this kid called me a name. Mom, this kid did that. And I did this for most of my um, grade school life until I was in the fourth grade. 
and I was nine mm -hmm. years old and I came home from school and the first thing, you know, I would march in and go, mom, this kid and my mom put up her hand and she went, stop right there. And I went, what? Mm -hmm. She said, stop right there. I don't want to hear anything about what anybody did to you. Just come and sit down at the table. So I went and sat wow. down at the kitchen table and she said, look, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but honestly, I don't care. And I just Whoa. like looked at her like, what do you mean you don't care? You're my mom. And mm -hmm. she said, look, so far your whole life, all you've been doing is coming home and going, mom, this kid, this mom, this mom, that she said, and you know what? Someday I'm not going to be here. And I said to her, well, where are you going? And she's like, <laughs> I'm going to not be here because I'll be dead. And I'm like, mm. but that's not going to happen for a very long time. She said, I know, but I want you to understand right now that you need to start fighting your own battles and sticking up for yourself and be your own person because I'm not doing it anymore. So this mm. is how it's going to go right now. Starting right now, no matter what happens, I don't care what happens, what anybody says to you. And unless somebody died or the house is on fire, don't come home and tell me what these kids did. You fight back. Mm -hmm. And I was mad. And I said to her, but that's not fair. She said, well, life's not fair. So I left the table and I went in my room and I thought, wait till my dad gets home. I'm mm -hmm. telling my dad, right? Mm -hmm. So my dad came home and I said, dad, I got to tell you about something. Well, guess what? My dad already knew because she called mm -hmm. him and told him at work. This is what, because they never did that good cop, bad cop. They were a team. Yeah. Yeah. So my dad comes home and I'm like, dad, mom told me that I have to do this and that. And I went through the whole story and he goes, I know. And I said, so you're going to go tell her that I don't have to do that, right? And he goes, no, you will. I'm like, but dad, <laughs> he goes, don't. He said, no, there's no discussion. Just do it. You'll be hmm. better for it in the long run. And I was mad. So I went wow. in my room and there's me going, I'll show them. You just wait. Wait till I go to school. I'm going to start punching kids. And right, because I thought fight back means you have to punch yeah. them in the face. Yeah. But then yeah. I realized when it started happening, I just had to defend myself. So she, she gave me the tool of, of defending myself and sticking up for myself. And really what she was teaching me is she wanted me to become my own person and do what mm -hmm. I thought was right. Not what other people were driving noise to me about that was right. Cause that's noise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I started fighting back and, and, um, doing all these things. And then as I got older, um, I gained more confidence. I was always a confident kid, but I wasn't sure about myself on the inside. And what I realized, you know, not to skip ahead, but what I realized when I wrote Balance for Life, mm -hmm. and I had to ask myself, what is the reason? Why aren't people taking care of their health? It's not because they don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's because we all have been taught in our life, Ken, to live our life from the outside in, instead yes. of the inside out. So yes. what happens is we all grow up and we hear the stories and the noise about you got to go to the best school and marry a good person and make sure you have this and you have a nice house and everybody's chasing the dream and money and, and showing their neighbors that they have the best cars and they have all, which is fine. And I'm not begrudging anybody to have any of it. You work mm -hmm. hard, you deserve whatever it is. However, I started seeing people now they're in their fifties and sixties and they're thinking about retiring soon, but they're like, they're kind of broken and broken by they're not healthy and they're not happy. Mm -hmm. and they yeah. finally get to take a breath and they realize, yeah. wow, look what I've missed out on. And for me, mm -hmm. I always say, while everybody was busy traveling the world, I was mm -hmm. busy traveling the world of people. And mm -hmm. I was noticing how people behave and people's behaviors. And I'm very sensitive to people and the way they behave and the way they respond. And so along the way, I start studying people um, and the people I wanted to, that I wanted to emulate and the people I wanted to be like, or a boss that I had that I said, wow, I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I have a little, I don't tell this to everybody, but I'm going to tell it to your to your um, <laughs> viewers, we appreciate and to you, it. is that I have a secret little club. It's called E O E, and mm. these are the three people that are famous 
in the world that I have followed since 1971. And they go in that order. And the first one is my idol of music is Elton John. Mm -hmm. because he has overcome so many things in his life. Mm -hmm. And then I added the O when I met Oprah and mm -hmm. I listened to everything <laughs> she said. No, uh -huh. I have listened to everything Oprah said. And I'm going to just say that she has helped shape me and give me the gusto to, yes, I'm going to do that. Yes. I believe in what you're mm -hmm. saying. And, and I did. And then the third one is the second E is when I did, it, when I found Ellen DeGeneres mm -hmm. because she is like a light of the world, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she has helped more people. She's, she's yeah. always positive. She tries to teach people to be kind. And they're my three people that I always look to, um, for guidance. It's an impressive list though, uh, for guidance. So that's yeah. awesome. I know uh, yeah. I, I have a friend, I have, uh, uh, a couple of my friends and um, uh, my girlfriend, she said her uh, Oprah was her her mom. <laughs> so I assume that Oprah has a lot of children that she doesn't know much about. But um, with well, that, she had wisdom. mentioned, yes, she, wisdom. she was telling me of all the things that she, it helped propel her to be the woman that she is today. And to hear you say a similar thing, it, it's I'm sure that there are lots of women out there uh, like yourself. And so that's awesome. I'm well, so the glad other that person, you had those. Yeah, the other person in my life that really shaped me to be a good human and a good woman and how to behave in the world as a, as a female is my mom. Oh, wow. Honestly, that's if good. I got to go, mm -hmm. I used to tell her all the time, if there was a mom store that you could go and pick out your own mom, I for sure would meet mm -hmm. you. <laughs> well, that's honorable, and that is awesome that you you would tell her. I'm sure she enjoys that, and probably have a chuckle now and then. <laughs> yeah. So she's watched you. Um, she watched you create this world that you have today. So here you are, this young woman well, moving she forward. She's watched me, but she's watched me from heaven because she passed I'm away in 2006. Oh, I'm sure she's watching. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. sure she's watching. I have mine passed away too, and I know she's watching. She's probably directing things, um, so I, uh, her personality. But um, here you are, you're learning uh, these different aspects of uh, your strength and so forth. And you had mentioned that you were in the car um, sneaking food and all of these different things. But the catalyst that changed your direction was that appointment that you had with the uh, your doctors. So talk to us from that, pick up from that place where you got this message, uh, the information that they had um, now given to you. How did you begin to move from there? You mentioned that you started studying. What did you start studying? How did you start implementing it? All of those things, if you can uh, walk us through some of those. So the person that really helped me to start on this journey was my older, my older brother. I have one older brother. He's five and a half years older than me. And mm -hmm. he's been thin his whole life, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, he eats whatever he wants. And I mean, he, when he was younger, he always worked out and he ran and he did different things, but he's always been in good shape. And he said to me, you know, I, I called him and I told him I'm really scared and I have to do something and blah, blah, blah. And he said, you really should look into um, about eating cleaner. And there's a lot of foods that everybody thinks because they're good for you or they go on a salad that they're really good for you. He said, and you're going to be surprised that there's many foods that we think are good for us. They're really bad for us. And I mm -hmm. said, really? He said, yeah. So I started researching inflammation and, you know, different things and about different foods and I can't give away the tea because it's the main thing I teach in my course, but I will tell That's you. That's perfect. That's okay. That, yeah, but I, I am going to tell you that if I had to tell everybody that's listening, the one food to never, ever eat in your life, and I, I have never, I haven't eaten them in four years and I never will again, are tomatoes. Mm. Tomatoes. I mm -hmm. went tomatoes. Tomatoes. I eat a basket of cherry tomatoes every day. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Because see, here's what was happening. And, and it's really interesting when you start reading and researching and it all starts to make sense mm -hmm. is when I was, was dieting or I was trying to eat better, or whatever I was doing, and I was eating tomatoes or other foods, my body would get smaller, but my stomach and my belly was still sticking out. And mm -hmm. one of the things that is horrible for any of us, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter if you're 10 or you're 40, or if you're 60, is when we have extra belly fat. Belly mm -hmm. fat, all that is, is inflammation in your body. And that inflammation is what starts down the road of getting diabetes and high blood pressure. And once yeah. you get those two diseases, unless you reverse them, it just keeps, it just keeps going and it develops into other problems. So for instance, yes. Think of it this way. Here's me as a kid from the time I was young until four years ago, yo-yo dieting, eating bad food. Maybe for a year or two, I'd eat really good and lose 30, 40, 50 pounds. Then a year later, mm -hmm. I'd gain it back. So it's like this yo-yo mm -hmm. effect for most of my life. And most of my life, that bad food is causing inflammation. So when you've yeah. been doing something for 40, 50 years, after a while, there's nowhere for this bad stuff inside of you to go, except to keep traveling mm -hmm. through your body and wreaking havoc. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. right? It makes sense, yeah. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you that it took about um, maybe two years, probably six months after I lost all the weight, where one mm -hmm. day I woke up and I went, wow, I feel different. Like my head mm -hmm. felt clearer. I was mm -hmm. thinking clearer because we're getting all this stuff. Yeah. All this inflammation, all this bad stuff out of our body. And when mm -hmm. you start feeling better on the inside and you really are living from the inside out, I started saying no to more things and, and saying, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, no, that's not mm -hmm. going to happen because other people wanted me to do things or other people are trying to manipulate from all the noise and the stories. Yeah. And that's yeah. when I finally put an end to them was right then. Wow. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, once you start living from the uh, inside out, you become empowered, I believe, into a different level. And Absolutely. the fact is that you are able to say and make better choices. The power of the will comes into play. And it's from that place you are uh, choices. It's amazing when people begin to live from the uh from inside out how much control they have of their decisions from how they move how they think their choices the power of choice becomes so clear and not as as you say all the noises presents to to themselves even if it does it still is not as um crowding their thought pattern they're able to dissect and move within that space and be in control of their thoughts. I've seen that so many times with people and it's a beautiful you know, place to live from. It's a beautiful place to live from. And you know, it's funny when you, what you just said is what I tell my clients is look, all the stories that you heard your whole life and the noise that you got because of it, here's mm -hmm. what happens when you live your life from the inside out. The beauty is the more empowered you feel and the better you feel about yourself inside, as mm -hmm. time goes on, you can turn the noise level, the volume goes down. Yes, yes. You can keep turning the volume down so that pretty mm -hmm. soon you don't even hear it anymore. You don't even hear it, yeah, you know. And that's as one, yeah. uh, in my world, I say to them, that's when you are uh, maturing, you're becoming a mature human spirit. You're becoming empowered. Once you control your thoughts, sir, you've, you've won, you're beginning to win the game at that point. Because once you begin to control that aspect of your life, your thoughts are what you, you uh, confess. Your confession adds to what you believe. Your belief becomes your what you act on. What you act on becomes your habits. What your habits becomes your life. And so you have to learn how to live from that space and create new You just world. gave me goosebumps. You just gave me goosebumps <laughs> because, no, seriously, because this is my tagline, mm -hmm. is what you think in your head, I mean, how you were socialized as a kid, mm -hmm. right? 
and what you think in your head as an adult is going to be the mm -hmm. definition of your life. Yes. That's it. You just said it. Yeah. That's who we are. We are creators. And that's why I always have people tell their story because when you, I have them, when you come on, I tell them, where are you today? Because you have created where you are today. And so the journey going back, and you heard people saying it's so easy, it's so easy. That's one of the things that has really corrupted our society, especially in the Western uh, world, is that uh, mentality that McDonald's and the fast food. I think the fast food concept is really good for some things, but it, when it comes to living and how we behave is really de detrimental to the human spirit. Um, you have to, as a creator, Again, uh, my background is uh, Christianity. I, I was brought up in it. Uh, when God came on the scene before, to start creating, there was, there was darkness. And so darkness, I always say to folks, darkness comes before anything if you want to be a creator. And the thing that has to pull out, be pulled out of, of you is that you are. And so when darkness presents, it's not the time for you to panic and just go under the ground, get under the blanket, get all the, all these things. The darkness came when they gave you the news. And you looked at that and go, uh-uh, uh, no, that's not how it's going to be. And so then you began to do what was necessary in order for you to now create this world that you have in your mind, that this dis-ease this is not going to rule my life. It is not going to control my future. So now I must create a new free, free future by which this body of mine and my human spirit would be walking in health in a different space of mentality. And so once you get that information in the darkness, I tell people, don't be afraid of it. Welcome those things. Sit down. Breathe. Because I believe the breath is from the natural into the supernatural. And then explore what's inside of you and then start pulling out from what's inside of you so that you can then, as you say, create this new space that you are looking back, you have created the program to help people to get to where you are now. And that's one of the most beautiful things in this life, is that after we have gained all of this knowledge, we have presented and the, the, we have utilized our uh, tools to get us to where we are, the most beautiful thing happens on the universe. We become servants. So here you are now as a servant. How, I know you have your book and I'm going to point everyone to the book so that you can tell us what this tea is so that we all can get out of our sicknesses and dis, dis ease so that we can be where you are. I'm looking at her and trust me guys, uh, you're gonna. Uh, she looks good. She wants. She's gained, uh, lost all her weight, as she said, and so she's presenting. And we want to get where she is. So talk to us now as to how the book came about. First of all, Sherry, what was well, the? So you heard people the, saying easy, easy, easy. Talk about. So what, it isn't tell us actually the book that I have is a food book that people get mm -hmm. when they join my course. Yes. Right. But I haven't written an actual book. So oh, that's the, perfect. So, Wants to get on your course. Awesome. Yeah. So the course is uh, you can either join for six weeks or 12 weeks. It just mm -hmm. depends. And the one thing I want everybody to know is that not only, you know, when I sat down and said, OK, how does this need to look? It has to be easy. So I made it the food list so easy that if you have a, a child in your house that knows how to read, they can tell you what to buy at the store. I made it that easy. The other awesome. thing that I realized is, you know, I did all of this on my own. And if I put all the money, Ken, on the table mm -hmm. that I've spent in my life going and paying for different weight loss programs, I can yeah. take you and myself and your girlfriend all on a, on a trip around the world. <laughs> all expenses paid by me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I said, okay, it has to be affordable. And it has to be easy. And the other thing I realized is that I did it all on my own. Nobody mm -hmm. helped me. And most people, the reason they fail is they need somebody to help them. 
But the people yeah. who they are looking to to help them, like their family, their family aren't the ones they should be turning to because their family, no matter what their family says and how much they love them, their family are the noise. And their mm-hmm. family is going to see them change. And when people that yeah. are close to you see you changing, they get uncomfortable. Yep. Mm-hmm. So here's me. I don't know these people. I, well, a lot of the people that are on my program, I do know them or have been on my program because I was referred to them or I had a high school classmate that I haven't seen in, you know, a hundred years. She was on my program and I said, okay, the one thing it's not going to be about is money. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to be that coach. That's like, I made a million dollars. I don't care if I make a million dollars. I just want people Mm -hmm. to get healthy. And after COVID, if people don't start getting real about food, it's it, it's going to get worse before it gets better because I don't know if you know this, but the statistics about uh, diabetes and high blood pressure in our in our country is astounding. Mm-hmm. One in three people are pre diabetic, and and over forty percent of our nation has either high blood pressure or diabetes. That's terrible yeah. statistics. Yeah. So what happened is I wrote the Balance for Life program. And as I started getting clients, some people would say to me, you know what, Sherry, I can afford it, but it would be easier if I could pay this much less. And I said to Mm -hmm. to a couple people, if I really let you take this course for less money, will you stick to it? And they said, yes. And I believe them. So for me, it's like, I said, okay, so is it about the money or is it about their health? It's always about their health. So I would mm-hmm. take less money from people I knew could not afford it, but they had yeah. the, the wherewithal to go through the program. So that's something yeah. I want everybody to know is, of course, I'm making a living, Yeah, but yes. I am not going to starve if I take a little less money from somebody who absolutely can't afford it. I'd rather mm-hmm. help you get better than not at all. Yeah. So so that's really what I did. I, I, I put together this food list. I wrote the course. It's a six-week or 12-week course. The entire six or 12 weeks is tailored to the person. So when when somebody is interested in my program, they get a free 15-minute consultation with me because not everybody is a good fit either because I don't want to yes. take anybody's money that I know is going to fail because they're not, yeah. they, their heart isn't in it. Mm-hmm. So I wrote the program. I decided, you know, some people need more than six weeks, so... I made the course, one of the courses could be, I mean, it could be six or 12 weeks. Mm. And then the other thing is, is I always follow up all the time with people and find out, do you need anything from me? Sometimes they'll yeah. text me or email me and say, do you have a recipe for um, a healthy barbecue chicken? Do you have a mm-hmm. recipe? And I have recipes for everything. So I send them (laughs) recipes. If they have a problem in the middle of the week before our coaching session, they reach out Mm -hmm. to me by email or text. I have no problem. And I don't charge extra. I don't do any of that. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be easy. I want it to be fun. And I just want people to feel better. And I have to say that most people, if they follow the program, like I tell them, and they do Mm -hmm. exactly what I say, within about seven to 10 days, people start to feel better. Good, excellent. In the program, when you were going through the the program that you you have now developed, did how much exercise and how many days of exercise did you need to do? Okay, so what I'm going to say is, if if you're not a person who loves to exercise, then if you could do move your body for thirty minutes a day, doing something, or go for a walk even a couple of days a week is fine. However, Mm -hmm. I was never, there was a time in my life where I went to the gym all the time. Mm -hmm. Then there was a time in my life where I took Muay Thai kickboxing and it was like Mm -hmm. four days a week. And now I'm going to tell you that for the last four years, the only thing I have done is I lift um, five pound weights at home. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, like during the pandemic, I took a, a cardio dance class online Mm -hmm. But every single day I go out for a walk or a hike for at least 45 minutes, anywhere between 45 minutes and two hours, depending on how much time I have. 
Because for walking me, is good. one of the things that I love is I need to get up during the day, put on my headphones, turn on some music and change the vibration of my, of my in my head mm -hmm. and go for a walk and just listen to music and think and create. And that's what I do. So I don't go to the gym. I don't do any of that. Mm -hmm. I just walk and hike because walking and hiking and eating good food, you can... I'm living proof that everybody can do it. You just have to move. Yes. So just go for a walk, uh, ride a bike, whatever it is. But if it's nothing else, just go walking. Walking is very healthy and it's a great space to meditate. I tell people it's great exactly. to get a chance to start looking within so that you can gather all your knowledge and insight. And then you can apply all of those things that you are noticing within yourself you can make those changes and, and grow as an individual. So I, I love it. I mean, some of the best decisions I've ever made about my course, about myself, about life was when I was walking up a hill or, you know, looking around, looking around at the beautiful scenery and the trees and the flowers. See, that makes me happy being outside. If I could live outside, I would. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I want to thank you so much for coming, and I hope that the listeners would get in touch with her and get into the classes, whether it's six weeks, 12 weeks, so that you can get healthy and you can also become one that teaches the uh, people to, uh, through using her uh, uh, thing, her, her course, to get healthy as well, so that you guys... Bring friends, bring all your, your, your friends so you guys can do it together. As and I give family discounts. Family get go. discounts. So but get I in do touch want with to tell her. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to tell you that I had such a blast with you. I'm so glad I finally got to meet you. <laughs> and I want to let people know that the best way to get in touch with me is mm -hmm. my uh, email account, which is mm -hmm. S H E R. It's share the gift, G I F T. Mm -hmm at Gmail or my Instagram is share the gift and you can go on my balance number four life Facebook page. Excellent. And I will also have that information when we are posting uh, Sherry's information and her podcast as well. So thank you so much for coming. It was an honor and it is my uh, understanding that you have, and I'm looking at you to see that grin on, on your face that uh, uh, you love what you do and you are having such a great time. And I, am. I thank you again for coming to Threads of Enlightenment and sharing all your wisdom with us. Thank, thank you. you. I'm honored to be here. And it's a pleasure to be with you today. And just stay well. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Everyone who's listening to this podcast, we hope to continually help you to learn how to embrace moments of darkness because it is in the darkness that we learn how to develop and use our abilities to truly see those parts of ourselves often invisible to us in the light. It becomes your responsibility to navigate through all of your trials to find out who you truly are and begin your journey to loving yourself which is possibly one of the most difficult things you will ever do in your life. To love yourself and to find the real you, but always remember to enjoy the journey. Thank you for coming by. Please subscribe. And if you can support us financially, we deeply appreciate it. Mm -hmm.